Coming up in the news, if you're still wondering what is VAT and duty free, we will give you a breakdown tonight. A big furniture giveaway drawing hundreds of residents in need. And it was a Christmas tree lighting to a member in the West. The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening all, I'm Shashina wolf Arkison. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news this evening, the government continues to roll out incentives for economic development, stimulus and relief to aid residents as they grapple with life after Hurricane Dorian. Tonight, the Minister of State for Grand Bahama is sharing a long-term plan to provide assistance over the next 12 months. Worst storm to hit the Bahamas and many are still fighting to find some sort of normalcy, while others have yet to completely rebuild or renovate their homes. But now that the order has been laid through Parliament and the Senate for the Special Economic Recovery Zones that are now in effect for Apico, the Keys and Grand Bahama, the Minister of State for Grand Bahama, the Honorable Quasi Thompson, says this allows the government to put in specific relief items to assist those who have been affected by Hurricane Dorian. So the first relief item that is, has been put in place is with respect to real property tax. So there is the ability if you meet certain conditions, then you will be able to get relief with respect to real property tax. But that obviously is more, uh, more affecting Abaco than it affects Grand Bahama. By now, you probably heard about the customs duty and VAT-free exemption for the year. This government initiative has also been put in place to lessen the burden during this post-Hurricane Dorian time. So it's not a position where everything is duty-free or everything is VAT-free, but there is a specific list that has been provided by the government to say which items are actually duty-free and which items are VAT-free. However, when one looks at that list, the list is so wide that it actually covers many goods that persons are using during this time. So just what is on this list? So the list that has been passed would deal with unprepared food of all types, including packaged and processed foods. The list includes water, fruit, vegetable juice, personal hygiene products, medicine, medical supplies, clothing, footwear, hats, belts, socks, stockings, cleaning supplies, bed and bedding materials, all hardware uh, supplies, all building materials, landscaping materials, pest control supplies, electrical fittings and materials, electrical generators, uh, farm equipment, fishing equipment, replacement of boats, replacement of boat engines, manufacturing equipment, cots, uh, protective and safety gear, all household furniture, furnishings, appliances, solar panels, plumbing fixtures, office supplies, equipment, tents, air conditioning units. <coughs> Most importantly is replacement of motor vehicles and replacement of, of uh, motorcycles and golf carts. These special provisions will remain in effect until June 2020, and that's whether you make purchases locally or abroad. For more information, you can visit the Bahamas government website, Inland Revenue, or the Customs Department. Well, residents who are still struggling to regroup and recover since the storm, getting some help and putting their lives back together today, hundreds turned out to benefit from a big furniture giveaway. Megan Shepard has more in this story. The Ministry of Disaster Preparedness Management and Reconstruction, in conjunction with the National Emergency Management Agency and an anonymous donor, easing the burden of some residents whose homes were badly damaged or destroyed during the September superstorm. A massive furniture distribution taking place at the Fenstration building on Queens Highway. Minister Iram Lewis says that while they cannot furnish entire homes for every affected house, they want to impact as many families as possible. Provided bed mattresses, some um, bureaus, 
um, units that included kitchenettes also that included a um, refrigerator. Um, there are some tables, some side chairs, and some table lamps. Uh, we are doing our best to assist persons who would have lost all of their furniture. We do not have sufficient to outfit the entire Grand Bahama. Um, however, um, we are asking persons who would have lost everything when they come to the warehouse to select the most critical items that, that they would need. If it's a bed, it's a bureau, or a bed, a bureau, and maybe a side table, um, because we want to spread this initiative as, fast, uh, as far as possible. The initiative drawing hundreds of residents bright and early. However, Minister Lewis notes that, thanks to strategic planning, the event went extremely well. The turnout was exceptionally good this morning. Um, the lion was <laughs> wrapped around the corner, or, or, or two or three blocks away. Um, but law and order, um, was clearly um, in order. Um, I want to say a special thank you to Senator Kay and the staff from NEMA for organizing this event and for enlisting the services of the police and defense force. They were there bright and early, man in the gate. Um, they were lifting furniture, putting it on, on, on vehicles, ensuring that, that they were um, strapped in in a safe manner. Minister Lewis adding that they are making plans to continue various give back initiatives. We will not hoard them. We will not keep them in the warehouse. We want to get them out as soon as possible. So we're asking persons also to be to be um, honest. If you didn't lose anything, there are individuals who would have lost everything. Give them a chance to get first. Now this exercise will continue throughout the entire week from Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. until supplies are exhausted. Persons are asked to bring along a photo ID and a proof of residency, which includes an electricity bill and a phone bill. Megan Shepard, Sedanes Network News. Now, while residents are getting assistance with furniture, some say building supplies are still desperately needed. Minister of Disaster Preparedness, Management and Reconstruction, the Honorable Aram Lewis, says that the government is currently in the process of identifying persons to receive building material. Um, it's going to start soon. The, the, the trust fund established by the government is being finalized. Um, to manage the reconstruction process, reconstruction of homes. Um, that is a few weeks away, but in the meantime, we are also identifying persons who we can offer assistance to with respect to roof repair. And uh, we are identifying um, suppliers locally. We may have more buying power overseas, but we believe that the fastest way to do that is to, to, to purchase roofing materials locally. Um, the money would have been spent in the, in the Bahamian economy and, and so therefore it will be in circulation locally. Now he says that once confirmation of numbers have been determined, vouchers will be issued. Unlike what we did after Hurricane Matthew, we are not going to be giving personal checks out. Um, as much as a person would have loved for that to happen, that is the easy way out. It's easy for us to just cut a check and give it to every household. That's the easy way out. But we, we, we've made a determination not to do that. We, we have um, done assessments to determine the level of damage to each home. And based on the level of assessment, we have it in four tiers. We will know exactly what amount of, of what the value of the voucher will be. The voucher will be, um, be able to, they will be able to cast the vouchers in at the hardware store to get construction materials. Another part of the voucher will be given to the contractor for labor. In other news, the Grand Bahama Port Authority partnering with NGOs like Rotary, Town & Country, Global Medic, SBP, and Catholic Relief Services to provide remediation for homes in Grand Bahama. Port President Ian Roll says GBPA realized that the next step to recovery is the health and safety of residents. Therefore, they're launching their very own home repair request platform. That will enable Grand Bahamians who mainly need more remediation assistance to visit gbpa.com forward slash home repair. Let me repeat, gbpa.com forward slash home repair to request the necessary help. Please note that the type of information requested and required would be data such as your property number and street name, and I help most people know that. We are also requesting that you provide us with a copy of a utility bill that has the address of the damaged home on it. 
Andy Stufflath from SBP noting that mold remediation is one of the biggest challenges to rebuilding and they want to ensure that no one is left behind. What we've done is we've put our heads together and we found ways to stretch our resources so that we can serve more homeowners. We're sharing our knowledge, we're sharing our materials, our labor, so that we can ultimately impact more homeowners and help more people get home sooner. Um, so really, SBP, we see ourselves as gap fillers. When we got on the ground, we noticed that there was a lot of mucking and gutting happening in homes, but mold remediation was not being addressed. There was some educational um, gaps, knowledge gaps, and skills gaps. So through partnerships, we've worked with the Port Authority and with the partners in the room to make sure that we're addressing mold remediation because it is a serious problem. Switching gears now, officials of the Transportation Security Administration, or TSA, from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security are expected on Grand Bahama tomorrow to inspect the Grand Bahama International Airport. The airport incurred a significant damage following the storm at a cost of some $40 million. Once TSA grants approval, international flights will resume from Grand Bahama beginning with the national fly carrier Bahamas Air. Meantime, the government is currently negotiating the possible purchase of GBIA from Hutchison Ports Limited to ensure that the airport is rebuilt to support major tourism developments that are projected to come on stream in the months ahead. TSA is expected to also travel to Abaco this week as well to inspect the airport facilities. Police on Grand Bahama are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of a 51-year-old Haitian female. Reports say the 51-year-old woman was found unresponsive while in custody while in custody suite at the Central Police Station around 6 p.m. on Friday. EMS personnel transported the female to the Rand Memorial Hospital where she was pronounced dead. Police say foul play is not suspected in this matter and an autopsy will be performed to determine the exact cause of death. The woman was taken into custody after she was arraigned and convicted before the magistrate court in Freeport for breach of the Immigration Act and she was awaiting deportation. There's more news on the other side of the break.